Hello everybody, I am Savic and I'm here with Doc. You're watching King Win Pro League Week 8, Day 2. Doc, what do you think of the next match? We have Caldi versus Hypes next, I believe. Uh, Hypes currently 5-2, and two, Caldi 4-3. and three. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, yep. It's really important for both of these players once again. This is like another really important match because if Caldi wins, he like has a really good shot of going to the finals because he has a really good tiebreaker score. If Hyped wins, I think he might even be guaranteed to go to the finals uh, just because of his score. I believe so, and Hype has pretty much... I believe he has also uh, kind of secured his spot in the next season of King Win Pro League. And he's, he's looking really strong right now. Yeah. But, uh, for, for him, what's on the line right now, he wants to finish first. Because just finishing the league first, it gets you straight to the semi-finals of, of the, um, this season's finals, the um, final tournament. So uh, I'm sure that he, he, would, <laughs> he would love to just finish on first place to skip that quarterfinals match. I forgot about and, that. Uh, yeah, that's that's really really important. Actually, that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. Like that's the difference between a guaranteed, you know, third or fourth finish, or like you know, maybe a fifth and sixth finish, which no one will, you know, even come close to remembering. So. Yep, and uh, good. just uh, getting straight there and uh, <laughs> having that like front row seat to fight for them, for the grand prize and uh, for and uh, like a big chunk of that 25k. That's pretty big. And for Kaldi, if he loses this one, he might be like. He was then this game. He was the next match. He might even be out of the league. Yeah. So there's a lot of pressure. But if he wins, if he wins both, I mean, he, you know, he might make playoffs. Also, there's like, uh, you know, lots of pressure yeah. on both players. Obviously, uh, we have the classes right now. Kaldi has Druid, Shaman, and Warrior. Hyped has Hunter, Mage, and Rogue. Who do you think Shaman. is favored right now? Well, I'm just looking at that. I was like, Shaman. Dude, Shaman. What really? But yeah, it's in there. Uh, I would favor hyped, and actually, like this time, quite strongly even. I so would I, favor Caldi. Yeah. You think? Caldi. I mean, Caldi has to get a win with his shaman is the only issue. <laughs> like, if his shaman deck can pull a win off Hunter or um, Rogue or even Mage, then should be fine. Warrior is going to be any of those decks most likely. Yes. And Druid is like, you know, you'll lose to Hunter, you'll lose to Rogue maybe, you'll lose to Mage maybe. So I think Kaldi, if he can get a one with his Shaman, is going to, you know, do pretty well. Yep. Looking at Kaldi's Gal lineup, it seems like the, the Warrior is like, the, there's no way Kaldi doesn't win a game with the Warrior. Yeah. Like, there's absolutely no way. And Hype's lineup, on the other hand, it seems like all of the decks are kind of weak to Warrior. But it is conquest, and that might be part of Hype's strategy. That he's just like, okay, well, if if Kaldi brings a warrior, I'll just take the loss against the warrior, exactly. but I'll beat the other decks. Yeah, I, I like, I kind of like that strategy. It's interesting because like you can't really. A lot of people are too scared to bring the same type of deck, right? They're not going to bring like three classes that are just like warrior. They're not going to bring like warrior, Heladin, and like you know, Death Lord Priest or something. Because <laughs> if people bring that. like, you've done that, really? Yes. Oh my god! If they bring like mid range decks. Like Druid and like other things like that, you can get crushed. Like you can get absolutely destroyed. But if they even bring one aggro deck, like Hunter, or um, even if you can beat Freeze Mage, like you know consistently mm -hmm. enough, then you know you win. You you targeted the deck. You beat Conquest. You yeah. <laughs> I'll just like say a little bit about the targeting the thing because um, I actually did that to like Joe because he had a Mech Mage. And I figured that he probably does, and I brought three decks that I could against Mech Mage. So I went zero and two, and then like just crushed the Mech Mage three times. <laughs> but what happened last week was that I I was so sure that the, <laughs> that um, um <laughs> Firebat would bring a Freeze Mage. I actually brought three decks. I brought like I brought Warrior with Gazan. I brought Druid with Gazan, and, <laughs> and I brought my own Freeze Mage with Gazan. And what happened was. He didn't even play the freeze mage, and there was oh also goodness. there was a mech mage, yeah. But the mech mage was without secrets. I did end up winning. You don't you I don't play Kazans very much, do you? Me? I, 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 I hate Kazan. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't put you on Kazan. <laughs> I would not play a secretless mage a mech mage against you. That's why I did it because I figured that yeah. he, he he wouldn't see it coming. So I tried to was to, trying to catch him off guard there and failed, and um, <laughs> I, it's just, it's just in the end like. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty hilarious when I was like, I saw the mage, I was like, yeah, like, okay, I got this, and then, like, oh, where's the secrets? Maybe. <laughs> but it's just had some really uh, fortunate draws and was able to still 
But to me, that strategy isn't as good in Queen Kingwin Pro League or uh, in tiebreaker games because, um, like the tiebreaker is so important, right? And like if you if you give them the games or if you go zero and three because they didn't bring the deck, suddenly you're really behind in tiebreaker. But uh, well, that's that's true. Yeah, it's pretty bad for the tiebreakers. That's for sure. Uh, we have the classes for the first game, and Kalkin will be starting with his warrior, and the hype will be on his rogue. What what do you think are hype's chances to beat the warrior? Uh, depends on what type of rogue. I think I know what type he's gonna bring, and I would say about forty percent, thirty five percent, something mm -hmm. somewhere around that range. But uh, also, uh, actually, an interesting thing is the what if what if Kalkin brings the cream patron warrior? I don't think he's in that good Ooh. of a shape. Oh, he is. He is not favored if he brings cream patron warrior. That deck is um, much worse against rogue, I would say. I'd be getting crushed when I'd be playing against rogue. I'm just like. Well, the why I've been doing fairly well, even while misplaying, has been because there aren't that many rogues. But whenever I see a rogue, I'm having a tough time with the cream patrons for sure. Yeah, I think the uh, strategy is if you have Grom or Boom, you just you know go face a lot and hope that you can get some crazy combo off. Because if mm -hmm. you try to develop board, they're just gonna flurry you, and bad times happen. I feel like the most likely thing, though, is that the warrior is going to be more the standard, like the old school warrior list, which would put Kaldi, uh, with um, which would give Kaldi the upper hand. Yeah, for and, sure. and hyped wouldn't, you know, be too mad about losing to warrior, considering his, you know, his classes get countered by warrior. So. Yep, that's true. So if you're hype, you're like, okay, well, might as well get it out of the way first. Exactly. Like, that's the warrior. Ugh. I still dislike yeah, losing my first it. match. Even if you know you're like, you know, unfavored, I just like, ah, oh, I don't like losing my first match. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but I mean, I have to get come back from that. It's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. First game, and uh, the warrior looks to be a normal list, and yeah, the yeah. rogue also looks fairly standard from what we see right now. Yeah, he's running shredders and uh, fan cleave, mm -hmm. all golden, cause yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing standing out. All gold. Uh, so I think the most important card in this matchup for Warrior is Despite by a very, very large margin. Oh, Kazan, that's... Oh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. That's, uh, that's actually, like, that's just really, really interesting. I wonder if Kaldi has, like, kind of tried to go for some kind of similar strategy as I did a week yeah. ago. I feel like you don't really like need talking. it in the deck, though, because, like, uh, maybe huh. maybe you don't want to lose to Hunter that badly. I feel like it's not even worth it in Freeze Mage, but you know. No, it's it's, it's it not is. that good. Oh yeah. I mean, exactly. it, it's it doesn't. I don't think even think it fits there that well, like at all. But um, I mean, if that's your strategy and you just want to like make it like really, really, really favored, like you're just like okay, the strategy is that I will beat this deck, and you do, you don't you're not okay with having like 85 or 80 percent win. You just want to you want to make it a hundred. You've tested yeah. it out. I guess it's like gonna be okay. Okay, so I don't hype doesn't have a three drop here, he's just gonna mm -hmm. attack, re dagger. Next turn we'll probably see like a shredder from him. I'm assuming Kaldi's gonna coin out Shredder as well. I've been leaning like in this situation, I've been leaning towards the type of play that I would hit the armor smith, weapon up and oil. What do you think of that play? Then you would have like a Why would the, you the armor smith would be at three. Yeah, but then you would have a an oiled up weapon ready. Oh, oh, yeah, I like, I like that more, actually. I agree. Because here, like, having that ready would have kind of been sweet. Yeah, because then you could kill the first half of the Shredder if you want, or just finish off the um, Armor Smith. I agree. Uh, like the worst case is that you can you kill off the Armor Smith with it, with it for free, and like, I know your Spider, the Shredder will get off. I think, I th I think that, um, that the Eviscerate was a good draw, by Yeah, way. I think he's going to Eviscerate here. I think he's going to Shredder. Prep, Prep eviscerate, backstab, punch the other shredder, and then you know hope it's a two-two minion or something. I I think that's right. You don't want to give the warrior too much armor, and it kind of feels bad eviscerating mm -hmm. an armor smith. But you know, you're, it's more damage eviscerating the armor smith and eviscerating face because you know you save the armor or whatever. Yeah, I agree. Like it's definitely like it, it, it's it's uh, more more damage that way. Uh, what what other other lines of play, play, plays would there be? Like, do you not play the Shredder? Is there any reason to maybe deadly poison? I'm uh, just like every the armor. If you had a flurry in hand, there's uh there's some merit to oiling up right now or something, mm -hmm. but there is none. Uh, it looks like he's opting to save the prep. Yep. I don't. Know. I think so. this is fine. It's not that bad. Let's see what pops out. Ooh, that's oh, not that great. Cool. 
<laughs> no, not at all. But it's also it's not a Lord Walker troll or anything like completely useless. And in, in this situation, it's, it might in some cases be kind of the same thing as he as if he had a two three. Yeah, man, Death Blade is so sick, man. And this matchup is it is it is absurd. That's a that's fine. Trades still have the armor smith, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, if... like I said, that was like a, the two one was just as good as the two three would have been. Pretty sure he was still made that exact trade. So you can Drake backstab and ping. Oh wait, does he not have a backstab? No, he doesn't. I lied. Uh, he used it earlier. That's right. Uh... Yeah. Punch. I like it. He's gonna read dagger next turn regardless. Yep. Hyped hand is looking kind of dry right now. Yep. He needs a sprint to be, you know, in this game. Yep. The, all of the. He only has spells. He needs either more minions, something like another Drake, or maybe that sprint that you mentioned. Sprint would probably be the best draw. I agree. Kazan, I like it. Why not? It's a little weak to like a deadly flurry, but when else are you gonna use this card? Yeah, just throw it out there. It's better to play it than, than play anything else or not play anything at all. Oh, okay. that's a decent uh, draw. It's so awkward, man. Like his hand, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I think the prep of this play was like fine, but I guess he was hoping to draw into a sprint. Yeah, that's probably it. Like, that's the reason he wanted to save the prep. I don't see any other uh, like big reason to hold on to the prep other than hoping hoping for for the sprint. A side face, assert dominance. <laughs> he actually did go with it. Yeah. It does allow the potential for a cruel taskmaster trade, but uh, I do really want to do that. I mean, shield maiden is kind of sweet. Yeah, I think you just shield maiden, attack face. I don't know though, your next turn kind of isn't very good either, but if things get out of hand, at least you have an execute and then execute into Gromosh or Ragnaros and things start looking up, so. Yeah, it can't be too bad. And uh, another Ooh. thing, to... oh, there's the sprint. Yeah. Another thing to point out that the rogue is actually already down to 18, <laughs> which is fairly low at this stage of the game. It really is. Oh, whoa. Trade wow. Prince Gallywix. Okay. I actually lost a game to that as, um,. What deck was I playing? I think I was playing Priest. I was playing Priest and it cost me the game because like I thought stole like Eviscerate, couldn't use it. It was just terrible. I don't know. That card that card has potential. Yeah. I, I think it can be really strong. Yeah. That, that sprint top deck was absolutely there. Like, and even the cards that he drew from the sprint. I was already like ready though. Okay, Kaldi wins game one, but I mean after that sprint on that turn. Yeah, and Kaldi is like... like Hyped in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, Kaldi's turn isn't very good like this time around. If he had boom or something, Ooh. like maybe it would have been fine. Okay, here we go. Well that helps. That was a very good draw, I agree. I You just do it, right? I mean what he's, else? He's debating going <laughs> face. I like face. I like this. Oh. I like this a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is this Absolutely, is... yeah. With the chrome in hand already. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's game. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh... that's actually it. There's no way to draw any cards. There's no load. There's More heights. Look, look at his face. He's just like so disappointed. He's like, oh. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he knows. Yeah. Oh, he might be thinking it's Ragnaros as well. So mm -hmm. Dropping the minion, obviously. Get another rag target. Yep. But we know better. Nice effort, but I'm uh, not gonna do it this time. This is not one of those lethals that you miss. <laughs> Attack first, then play Grom. <laughs> well, that's what it up the ready. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Game one going to Kaldi. Yeah. No real surprise then. We didn't expect the warrior to be able to take the lead. <laughs> exactly. But now it's sort of the way. The game is far, like the match is far from over, and at that advent is like if it's one zero. Being a 1-0 with the warrior is like the worst 1-0 you can have, I think. Like if you started 1-0 with a shaman, that would have been, oh my god, okay, Kald is looking good. But now it's like, okay, well that was kind of to be expected. Exactly. I think, uh, I don't know. If you know the your opponent's going to bring warrior, you can target it pretty well, but... Mm -hmm. It's That's just true. a class that you can never really pin anyone on, because, you know, people change up a lot, so... That's actually pretty interesting. It was all about like <laughs> countering that. What if you like brought, let's say, Paladin that's like good against Warrior? You brought, brought the Shaman, like mid range yeah. Shaman. Shaman, and, Paladin, uh, and, and then you win. Like, you, Warrior <laughs> can't beat that. No, there's no way. 
But especially if you like tweak it, so the Paladin has, let's say, piloted, straight, like, piloted Sky Golems and uh, stuff like that. Just go kind of greedy, but with just enough taunts and heal, so that they don't burst you down. Yeah. <laughs> but that's pretty creative. That might be a little bit too much. And uh, Warrior is usually not one of those decks that you can put your opponent on. Like, I know he's going to play a Warrior. Because it's kind of been drifting in and out. And even if there's a Warrior, it might be a, might be the Grim Patron thing that has been uh, popping up lately. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, now uh, after that first game, Kaldi is going to have to play his Druid or Shaman, which are not that great of a... I think you of... know that your Shaman is your worst class, so you just like mm -hmm. go with Druid. And we, we do actually see, or we know mm -hmm. that Hypes picked Hunter, Kaldi picked Druid. Yep. Um, Looking good for Hyped, if you ask me. Yeah, for sure. I, I think... Uh, actually... Honestly, I would say that, you know, yeah, well, you hey, I guess. You play a lot of Druid, so you know how to, like, if, if somebody can beat a, beat a Hunter, it's, it just, it's you. Yeah, it just comes down to, like, if you draw oh. the Innervate. If you get Innervate over Wild Growth and, you know, Tempo like that, it depends if he's running Chows. Most people cut him. I, I don't really mm. think they're necessary anymore, so. Yeah, Chow, Chow is a big deal, for sure. Like, whether he, if, he, if he plays it or not, and if he draws it or not, so good starting uh, overall overall it's just I, I feel like this favors heavily the hunter no matter if it's mid-range or face hunter both do really well yes mid-range i think mid-range is better against uh sure. yeah. it's be, it's just because of the freezing traps or like just freezing traps yeah freezing traps and like high mains you just can't deal with too much damage mm -hmm. output all that good stuff yeah yeah it's it's kind of weird against that because like you you, you, get, you often need to keep her on like turn four just to keep up with the hunter, but then there's the high main. <laughs> if you don't have a silence with the high main, what do you do to it? It's like you lose the game to it. So you it's just have to go face at that point. And uh, most of them run belchers. Wow, and one of these hands is like a lot better than the other one. <laughs> yep, and uh, <laughs> kind of feel bad for Caldi here. <laughs> if you if you think you know which hand is better, make sure to tweet and use the hashtag Kingwin League. Oh, it's got a little bit worse now. But uh, I still wouldn't be complaining too much. Oh, freezing trap. All right. Is this so mid range? Wait, do we do we actually figure out that if it was mid range or not? No, we we, we didn't know. We're just oh. guessing. But uh, now we know. Okay. Well, and we don't we don't be... know. It doesn't have to be mid range. Freezing trap. freezing. Yeah. It's not not as bad as you would think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I guess all, all the other cards are fairly like generic. Just go in the both decks. Okay, I think I think now it's safe to say that. Now it's safe to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well that means Caldi can still come back. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> double swipe them, man. Like he can still come back. I, I have faith. Uh, I'm okay. I just trust you. If you have <laughs> faith, then I have. I have a little bit of faith then, dude. But I mean, I've been there, and when when I play Druid, and when I hero power on turn two, when I hero power on turn three. I usually don't win the game. <laughs> well, I mean, like, think of it this way. If Hype draws, like, another freezing, another trap, another mad scientist, then, you know, oh, he's yeah. just drawing, like, super dead. If he draws unleashes, those are pretty dead. So, it's not too bad for, uh, Kyle. If they're freezing, if they only, yeah, freezing trap to, to make the scientist suck, that would be, like, the... Exactly. The swing, I guess. I wonder if he silences here. He should, I think. I uh, probably would. Um, what do you think? It's just an issue of whether or not he has bow. If mm. he has bow, then you need to silence. If he doesn't, then you need to kill it. I would silence probably. Uh, I, I tend to lean towards the silence in this spot. Oh wow. Well, okay. Shredder is kind of fine. I would probably just play the Shredder to be honest. But the, I mean, with the trap up, I can't really blame him for playing the bow either. I think bow is pretty solid here. Especially because, like, you don't really want them to, like, freezing trap their keeper. You just kind of want to, like, keep that up. Against Druid, like, Kaldi needs to draw a Force of Nature. That is the number one card he needs to draw. Fair enough. I would have just been, like, uh, like that. So I, I think the Hunter could just, like, out-tempo the Druid so bad. With, the, with that Shredder and with the loaded follow-up. Like, and the freezing trap already up. I feel like there might have not been any way for the Druid to really come back if he just chose to like flood the body I'm a little bit more heavy and just skip the bow. That's true. But I, but I, I do understand this, this too. 
because the breathing trap is there. So the bow is uh, guaranteed to get a lot of work done. Wow, unless he... there's a uh, Jones. Okay, he was testing the trap. I was like, wow, he's really signaling slight, but he was testing the trap. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, it's not very good for uh, for Caldy. Are you losing your fate? <laughs> yes, I, I definitely am. I think you just attack and play. You don't have to attack, actually. You just play Sylvanas and you sit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Just to like make sure that there won't be a new freezing trap coming up. Exactly. So it's better to wait. Ooh, oh, that's... Yep. Oh. Now you can assert your dominance. You can do become anything. a true hunter. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a situation where... You either trade your Lotheb and don't play anything and then play, you know, your stuff after Sylvana steals something. Or you just go all face. I think you just smork it up and uh, go all face. Well, Drop much... the Shredder, hero power. How much damage the do you have? Is... Sorry? How much damage do you have? It just depends on this companion. Yep. Okay, all now stuff. you go face. I don't like Unleash <laughs> here. I think it was a bit unnecessary. Maybe he could have hold on this, but I mean, he could, he can put um, he pushes all this too so damage. low. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's just that yeah. now he doesn't have a beast. I don't see any reason not to attack. You put him to five, you can kill him with kill commands. Mm -hmm. I guess there's that. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, it doesn't. I don't yeah. think there's any way to throw this. You can see that there's uh, like a full clear, but. It's not really good enough. Or is at least a, it's one there. Yeah, you can uh, attack with the steel of one. No hold. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can steal the one one. Uh, one one death rattle. Yeah, sure. swipe the Leoc. Swipe the Leoc and then attack into the the loaded. Yeah, but we can see that's not enough, right? Yeah. It's the hero powers. I think it is because there's no beast, so it would be a three plus three plus two. So that's eight. So he can like. Three go plus up three plus to nine. He can he can go oh, up. To yeah, nine. you're right. You're right. But uh, is that like a winning play? I don't know. I mean, is there? Any, is <laughs> it is a winning play because no other play keeps you alive. <laughs> but he can know it for sure. So like playing the shade would like oh, okay, yeah. kind of make sense in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like if, you, if you're just like hoping that there's no kill command. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. Even if he had used the hero power, he would have been dead here now. Because of that second kill command draw. Exactly. And uh, to be fair, like even if he, if the second kill command wasn't drawn and he used the hero power, it would have just like delayed the inevitable. There was yeah. no combo pieces in the in the all this hand just yet. That poor Jude. Type ties it up. Poor poor Jude. Another prediction going correct. Hunter taking out the droid. Yeah. What do you think? Does Caldis pick, stick with the Druid for next? Or? Um, what does Hyped have left? Hyped has Mage and Rogue Druid. left. I think you stick with the Druid. I think Druid will destroy those. Or yeah. at least do fairly well. As long as it's not like Mech Mage. Should be okay. I think so. Though. There's also a little bit of maybe strategy going into it. Uh, that Hyped can't know what kind of Shaman Caldis is running. It could so, be Mech Shaman, honestly. I, I think yeah, he played Mech be. Shaman against me. I'm not 100% on that. But... Oh, he did. Okay, well then, definitely. But like, it's um, it's a more likely option. And I personally, I I think the max shaman is way better than the mid range shaman. I think the mid range shaman is kind of poor right now. I can't find a good time to play it. I don't even know what I want to play it against against uh, other than uh, warrior. So if I was to bring a shaman deck to a tournament like this, it would probably be max. I think shaman is okay. It uh. It's not too bad against Rogue, surprisingly, but mm. it's not favored, I would say. Yeah, I agree. I think Mech is a little better right now. Uh, maybe with the new card coming out, you know, mid-range can take its rightful place on top maybe. of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit doubt doubtful about that, but we'll see. Like, um, the only time will tell. There's a lot of, like, cool stuff that you can do. You're talking about Lava Shock, right? I'm talking about the new... Four card, the four mana card. Oh, the one with overload. What did you do? The random one that has six HP base goes from oh, three yeah. attack. Not bad. It replaces. Yeah, you might not even have to run like. I mean, you need cantrips in the deck, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it might 
because you're going to be overloaded on your turn five, so you might not you might have to cut Drake or something. But then you know you just have a bunch of high power creatures. You know, dropping that and then waiting a turn and then dropping like Fire Elemental. That's like a lot of power. So yeah, that's true. I really uh, dislike the having the overload for turn five because five drops, <laughs> in know. my opinion, are so stuff. important. They are some of the most powerful stuff. But the, the stats on the card itself, that's just so amazing for four mana. Kind of a five, since we should count the overload too. But still, like the stats are really solid. I agree. So maybe maybe it'll put Shaman back on the radar. For the next game, Hype will be playing Rogue, and Kaldi is going to be his Shaman. So we are about to see which, what it is. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually really curious about the Shaman. Me too. I really, really, really curious. The rogue we already kind of know. But if think... it's mid range shaman, I think he's gonna get crushed by the yeah. rogue. Well, it's not too bad. Who do you think is gonna win? You just think Mech is favored against uh, rogue, and then or against uh, yeah rogue and mid range is not favored against rogue. Yeah, yeah. Like, but if it's uh, let's say it's mid range, because I I've been always like uh, with my rogue, I feel like shaman is one of the better matchups. The mid range shaman. I, I like. Um, well, not a hundred win rate, but uh, a <laughs> really solid. <laughs> and uh, we are about to get to the game. Yeah. Here we go. So uh, we can see that it is most likely. I mean, we know that it's Mech Shaman now. I like yes. the choice. I like the choice a lot. Like it's aggro deck. It counters kind of the decks that hype brought. So good choice by Caldi. Yeah, I agree. I really like bringing it here. Good choice for the for the format. And uh, no, we have to we have to see now if it's gonna pay off or not. No one drop, but he does have the mech warper. Yeah, I actually think boom is pretty important. Pretty really important it's in this rogue. matchup. Mhm. Mm it's one of the better cards for sure. Not not what you want in the starting hand, but I I agree. Like when I play rogue and I see a doctor boom, I'm like, oh my. Oh, like it's so painful to deal with at times. Like you don't really want to sap it because the boom bots are so dangerous yeah. as well. But if you soak seven damage on it, that doesn't feel right either. I really like Anoyatron here, just because yep. next turn you can Mech Warper, play your uh, Zapomatic. Your Anoyatron should still be up, and you can't play Zapomatic this turn because, like you know, Coin Si obviously yes. a real fear. I, I agree, definitely the right call to play the Anoyatron over over the other two. And here should be the other coming up. Yep. It's looking a bit clunky for the following turns for Kaldi right he now. Needs uh, some good top decks for sure. Yeah, he's missing four and five. Like the start is not that bad aside from missing a turn one. As long he as he gets... picks up one of them, yeah. I feel like he'll be in okay shape. Yep. So uh, yes. I I believe has to kill this automatic no matter what. So awkward because you want to develop one of your four drops, but like this automatic is just. Not if he well. only had a backstep or prep or preparation or a flurry even, even a flurry, yeah, exactly. It's pretty clunky. Like there's so many cards that would just like completely swing the game in his favor, but no, he's like missing all of them. You do just like deadly and heavy. Oh, I don't just know. Died. But if if he leaves up the Zabomatic and this, let's I say think pointing is fun. Up. I think you can take the damage. Can you? I'd be like a bit terrified of flame. Though. I mean, it's either a coining out like the yeah. I'd be terrified of flame tongue as well. It's either coining out the teacher or just evisting and sitting. I, I kind of like that, just evisting and sitting. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think just it's wrong. It too. There's not much damage on the board. That mm -hmm. one creature represents like, I don't know, six damage, mm -hmm. which is like twice the power of the other minions on the board. Yeah, and also that would allow him to keep the coin. So next turn he could go, go like a violet teacher coin. Deadly poison because Mech Shaman really struggles dealing with the one ones big yeah. time. So he played a. Uh... Ooh, that's a that's a pretty good draw. Uh, turn is he on four? Yeah. I think he has just mark it up here and like play the spider. <laughs> Do you really think you like rock bite her face with that thing? <laughs> just Maybe it's so bad. It's so cool. <laughs> but it's one mana six damage. How do you say no to that? And there's like no good trades. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess he can rock bite it himself and like. I think. It. Okay. I think it's risky, but. I'd smork it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really would. It's so much damage. 
He's not going. Aww. I think he's playing the wrong shaman. If he's doing this trade. Oh, what is it? Okay. Good. I, I like that I played the uh, Shredder over the Teacher because Teacher gets punished by Hex, it gets punished by Flame Tongue more. It's just the right decision, in my opinion. I think you trade here. Uh, you like the Shredder? No, 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 no. I think you trade the 2-3 the into the 3-2. I don't think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, don't, you don't go face. No, no, I like the Shredder, but uh, I, I like going face more, I think. I think I agree with you. <laughs> I actually don't know if it would be the right play. It just looks so empty. <laughs> so juicy. Yeah. So here. Well, you can't yeah. flurry. You don't waste a flurry here. Those trades kind of. I, I think trading with the with the going was the right play, not and not really like going. Uh, now that I think more about it, because you saw last turn that there was no way to deal with the Zabomatic, and by making these trades, there's a fair chance that the Zabomatic is still gonna stick around for the next turn. That is true, because he did have coin. Uh, so he has the same amount of mana this turn. He's only yeah. one card deeper. So yeah, I... there's merit. Yeah. No, not an, I'm not an expert. I actually never played Max Shaman in my life. So neither, neither <laughs> have I, honestly. I shouldn't be like calling the plays <laughs> that much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> rock fighting is automatic. So much fun. How can you not? Yeah. It goes we. <laughs> because we. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is he gonna set up for the flurry? I don't. I think sapping is okay. Um, we can see that actually sapping would be pretty bad. Yeah, exactly. Caldius doesn't have a play for turn five, but I, I think sapping is like the correct play. I think I would instances. I would sap in Abyss. Yeah. I like this. Yeah, yeah, I would I would go for it too. And if he if he floods board again, you can deadly flurry, re dagger, would be a good time. Thing well, is, I can. So. Oh. I don't, I don't know about Hypsons. Well, that's, that's... That's not a very... That's a whiff, for sure. Yeah, but it's, it's actually it's actually not that bad, because if he drew into a lower tier minion, the Flurry would get a lot more value. Mm -hmm. um, this way, at least, like, Hyped has a decision here. He has to either, like, you know, play the Flurry now, or he has to play the Teacher and, like, you know, sit. So... Yeah. Actually, kind of good he whiffed, in some sense. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Like if he got a mech worker or something, it would have just died all the same. The exactly. Point. So at least he has a rock fighter now. Mm -hmm. If he if he plays like a doom hammer, at least one copy of doom hammer, and he draws it, he has access to instant ten damage. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> the turn six fire elemental face. Yep, <laughs> good old. <laughs> that's pretty powerful here. Like we, uh, there's nothing in hype sand that would oh, feel such. Like such an ugly hand. Yeah, Trade Prince does get pretty good trades with that, but it's still like, eh. Just, it, it's too slow, and taking the 6 to Dome is exactly. not nice. So it's turn 7, I guess, uh, you know, play Boom. I feel like you could make a bot to play this game sometimes, like, you know, turn 7, just play Boom every time, and you'll win 50% <laughs> of the game, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> if I have 7 mana and a Boom in my hand, I don't even see my other cards. <laughs> okay, just throw it out there. No need to roll. When people rope and then play Dr. Boom on turn 7, I'm oh like... My God, exactly. <laughs> I feel like just punching them through the monitor. I wish that was possible. Maybe in 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> the future. Uh, This is bad. It's really bad. Is there... Is there nothing? He's I dead don't... unless he sprints into double prep or something. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. Like, back... No, the six damage in Kaldi's hand. Looks like an impossible task. I think a lot of this came down to Hype drawing pretty poorly at the start. He didn't get a backstab. He did get the flurries, but they were a little bit late. Yeah. He didn't get any it free drop. So exactly. It, was a, it was the turn four. It was the turn four where he needed either flurry Backstab or prep. Yeah, he, he had, had to like play it. Those. He had to play like a shredder or something, and it just didn't work out very well for him. So yeah, like if he had some one of those cards, the game would have been completely different. He would have like snowballed the other way. I feel like. It's like but now it's just like okay, yeah. Yeah, instead he drew like double sprint, and <laughs> <laughs> there's that f there's that you know um, agent in that farseer. That agent sure mm -hmm. would have been nice on that whirling zapomatic. I want him to fire elemental boom, but yes. yes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, nice. Holy, oh my god. He knows how it's done. 
So Kaldi is going to be taking game two. So it's 2 1, Kaldi against Hypes. Yep, that Shaman coming out strong. That was, that was <laughs> quite something. I like seeing the mech Shaman. It's like in a good spot. But it's like it's like the, one of those decks that every time you see it, it's like really scary to play against. Or it seems really strong. But on the other hand, it's not like over the top strong. Everybody would be playing exactly. it. Exactly. It's like a fun deck that you can bring every now and then. It's not like, you know. It's not like Face Hunter where it's just like smork, smork. So, well, I mean, it kind of is, but like it's, you know, you yeah. don't feel as bad losing to it in some in some aspects. It's absolutely viable, but it's also like one of the things about it is that the meta does not like revolve around it. So there's, a, I'm sure there's plenty of counters to it, but uh, nobody plays those counters. Like you don't like uh, choose your lineup based on, on a mech mage. Like what is good against mech mage? What is bad against mech mage? You don't think about it. So that kind of gives it that, that like sniperino yeah. type of thing against your opponent's lineup potentially. I agree. So it looks like Kaldi is going to be you know playing Druid the next two times. Hyped, I guess he's going to go for the tiebreaker points here. Um, he should be at least. So if you're hyped, do you pick the mage or do you pick the hunt or the uh, rogue against Druid? He, he he picked the mage. I would like to answer that question. Um, if his mage was freeze mage, I would pick the rogue. Exactly. But if it was Tempo Mage or Mech wait. Mage, I would pick the Mage. I, 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 wait, uh, I think I think I got that reverse. If it was, I think if it was Freeze Mage, you would pick the Mage. Into Druid. Oh, into Druid. I'm sorry. I thought he had Mech Shaman still. No, no, no I, I would pick the the Rogue. You're right. Yeah. So I, it might be Mech. I think you're right. Yeah. So that's how I feel. Because we say, see the hype is gonna queue up his Mage. Yeah. So he feels the Mage is better than the Rogue is. So I I would make the conclusion from that that it has to be mech or tempo or one of those but something with mirror entity because the druid is known to struggle with that card yeah for sure i think mech is very very heavily favored against druid mm -hmm. but do you, does it, is there like a is there maybe a kazan in uh, in call destroyer because we did say a kazan in a warrior and yeah, if you that's... play a warrior you might play it in a druid as well i would i would put him on having it in druid especially if you yeah. run in warrior druid makes more sense to have it in so it could make I a pretty so. big difference exactly. yeah like, we don't know it but I, I mean just like the way my brain works I, if i was to play Kazan, i would play it at least in the druid and then like maybe not in the warrior but if he thinks that it's worth running even in warrior i'm sure he thinks it's worth running in druid yeah okay so we can see that it's actually mech mage it is yep mm-hmm uh, and uh, Kaldi is playing Innervate <laughs> Druid and uh, not the Inter He's playing Innervate Druid, is that the new deck? It's called Innervate Druid. Yeah, <laughs> People figured out that it's good to have a <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, Zero, uh, like two coins or whatever. <laughs> it's a good thing he's playing the Innervate Wild Growth version, not just the Innervate version. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's been kind of popular lately, just like surfaced two days ago. <laughs> Man, these new decks, so refreshing. <laughs> yeah, really fresh. Uh, so you coin yeah. here, right? Yep, I think you're going to the scientist. Yep. I would say so as well. And here we go. Because now you can like pick up another mech. Potentially for next, like a like a clockwork gnome or, uh, or exactly. like a, yeah, anything. And also that's kind of like if the druid was to weave the wild growth here. By playing the mech for you to give like a reasonable turn to with uh, with the rod. It's true. On the other it's... hand, it will also like kind of deny that. Like there's still lines to think about that because because by playing the mech for you kind of block the potential for wild growth. For wild growth, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, it's only good if you have like a really good follow-up play. I feel like you might as well yeah, just like so. if they don't have wild growth, then they probably have the wrath. So you might even be just helping them mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like. I mean, obviously they don't. They might keep wrath, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's interesting to think about. Yeah, the big thing I'm probably here here was that why he chose to go with the mad scientist first was that the the simple fact that he, there was no other mechs, so the effect would have kind of been wasted. And it, it, like playing the mech warper here without any mechs is also like you really just hope that it would survive because of two finger towns. Exactly. I think it he doesn't feel good. It's debating like whether he wants to innervate Belcher, but you just wrath, yeah. Yeah. Pink face, you don't even want that secret to go off. So as long Absolutely. as I feel like if hype um, doesn't draw another secret, he's still like pretty favored to win this. Uh, yeah, he should be okay. Although the turn three looks so horrible. 
This is where I struggle. Okay, yeah. You play the snow choker. Because sometimes I have trouble with mech mage. I'm just like, uh, do I like play on curve or like, you know, <laughs> I'm too I'm too used to that druid mindset where I'm just like, hurt yeah. derp, play the five card on five man, I can match stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hydra had a really rough start with this mech mage, I think. But, uh, but the thing is, those mirror entities are going to be absolutely huge. Yeah. Like, uh, there's no way to deal with the mirror entities in the Kaldi's hand. Oh man, he, he needs to pop because if if he innervates Rag next turn, then mm -hmm. like it's just bad news bears. It's just if he gets three hits on the Belcher, that would be so big. One, two, uh, and three! Oh my goodness! Oh, it's so sick! Oh uh, crap! <laughs> uh, it must be good to be hyped right now. And if if he only hit it twice, he would have had to throw in this Jaka as well. Honestly. Honestly, I think that Yolo Rag is the right play here. If I could see both hands, <laughs> if, I, if I could see both hands, I would play Rag here and put myself on a 25% chance to win this game. I think you're absolutely right. But how do you make that call? I mean, you it's can't. Only yeah. But I mean, I, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It's it's it's, it's ballsy. so <laughs> it's, it's a long shot, but it's like it's something. Because what what card is gonna? pull you out of this if you don't play it now. Exactly, and like, it procs the mirror entity also, so it's not even that bad, right? Like, if you're running Chows, I could see like, maybe not playing it, but I doubt he's running Chows, mm -hmm. and maybe Kazan as well. So now it's like, he has to draw a small minion for that, and then like, Rag afterwards. His hand. And he does have the inner rate, right? so it kind of allows him to play the other minion, but it's still like, it has to be something so small. Oh, that's a good one. Good draw, yeah. Oh man, it is looking so bad for Kaldi. Yeah. I, I'm like wishing that he went for the rag play there. Yeah. Uh, he can rag, so innervate, like, innervate, innervate swipe. It's the same odds or whatever. We can do, the, we can do both. <laughs> no cards in that anymore. Oh man. I would imagine that he's gonna stick to his, like the, the line that he took last turn and not play the rag into the mirror entity. I think I would pray that it's counter spell and just intervene. <laughs> 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 I guess he would play Rag in that instance, but. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. It did also be that he doesn't like want to look bad because to playing the Rag into that and then hitting like a mech warper. Exactly, you'd look like a like... fool, but even though if it's like the best play. Yeah. Um, what do you think of hype playing Harvest Golem in Mech Mage? He does it like every single time. I I personally don't like it. But I, I don't like it either. I think you can include like maybe one Harvest Golem and Mech Mage for like, you know, an extra mech or whatever. But playing two Harvest Golem over the Spider Tank, I think is like, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. Yeah, I think Spider Tank is just so powerful with a uh, three or four body. I, I like it a lot. Like oftentimes it escapes the AO, it's like Hellfire and, uh, and it doesn't die to a bra. The four, four health is just so good. Yeah. Like sure. having the Death Rattle, uh, I, don't, I don't really think it's worth it. Also that um, the spider thing hits for 3, I think that's quite important. Because a lot of your other minions hit for 2, so it's like when you're choosing your trades, having that one at 3 attack is like, might give you a good trade. Yeah, so you see Hypes here playing around MC Tech, it's just like, he's thinking of ways how he could lose, and I mean yeah, MC Tech's a way he can maybe lose, even then I doubt it, but I like it, just you know, I like playing it well. slow. Uh, I like it a lot as, as well. It's like um, y y he knows that he's he's gonna win this unless something really really weird happens. Oh, now he goes for it! Come on, man. Aww. Where were those? <laughs> Where were those plays a few turns ago? I'm counting it up. So he can swipe them. Can he actually win this Tinker if it Town. hits the Ragnaros? Um, swipe the Dinger Town. So there's six on board. Six. Six on board and. The Four in hand, kind of. With yeah, the so he would, he would live if um if it hits the rag. Yeah, looks like it. Nope. No. So is so that game? You... you can get a 50-50. or well, yeah, you know, just take to it. win the like, game. You, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Exactly. Is it enough? He can even like just ping, right? Yeah, you don't have to play the frost. Ping phase and like play two harvest columns. It's not like you you care. Play a harvest golem. You just harvest golem, ping, and play oh. your mirror entity. Do you have enough mana? I can't actually see the mana. Oh no, you don't. Mirror entity, sure, that's fine too. Mirror entity is better, in my opinion. 
Which one? Mirror entity is better. Yeah, probably. Oh my goodness. What if... What if he had a Doomsayer in his deck? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this would be hilarious. The Come best on, tech. please. Frost for one. Doomsayer. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I mean, it ends the game, right? Doom. That's <laughs> like a doomsayer. <laughs> All right, so Caldi's gonna or hype's gonna tie it up. Scores two two. Yeah, we can see a game five this time around. The first series was super quick, but this time we're gonna be going all the way. So the last game will be hype playing rogue against Caldi Street. Any thoughts? I think that hyped is favored in this. I think I think that Rogue is favored against Druid. I do. Although the Druid is playing Ragnaros, so that's actually a pretty big issue. Uh, but I still think Rogue is favored. This is kind of just my uh, personal opinion, but I feel like when the if the Rogue is uh, like highly skilled, then it's the Rogue favored. Because <laughs> I, I seem like when I play on the ladder, I feel like my Druid is always favored yeah. against against the Rogues there. But when we go to like tournament level players, I, I think that the, the rogue is usually the one with the advantage. Exactly, and the yeah. hype is definitely a great miracle rogue player or oil rogue or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, hype is one of the best for sure, and I I agree with you. On ladder, everyone's just like, oh, you know, Druid wins 100%. Well, mm -hmm. tournament players are usually pretty good, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the, like rogue is one of those decks that can be a little bit trickier to play, and there's a lot of small things that you you might miss, like you don't prep a sap when you're supposed to prep a sap. That can absolutely like swing the game around. So in in ladder there might be a, more like those less, less experienced players. But hyped is someone who knows what he's doing. And uh, I would expect him to to take this one. But once so again it all it all comes down to like wild growth innervate. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do as the rogue if the druid has the you know the place. Yeah. Wild growth and uh innervate. Let's see if he gets it. Okay. Oh, he gets both. <laughs> look, look, look we, we called it. There's the Kazan. He has Kazan, there. yeah, exactly. But it's not going to help anymore. It's a bit late. Oh my god. This okay. is like the problem of playing Kazan. So like, do you keep Do you keep the... Um, I'm sorry, I cut you off. But do you keep the Drew the Cloth? Uh, Wine Wild Growth Interview. Good. I mean, it's pretty good when you play it as a taunt on like turn 3. But I I don't blame him for like throwing it away. Yeah, okay. I, I agree, because usually if you have, like, I don't know, it seemed like you had a higher curve. But yeah, I agree, because on, like, you know, super good tech against some classes, but then you're just like, mm -hmm. yeah, it dies to, like, Drake backstab. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I was just about to say, it's like, he queue up the druid, and he's like, yes, I put the Kazan in the deck, like, you queue it up against the, against the deck with secrets, you're like, oh, I got this, I got this, I got the Kazan, and then you're like, okay, never drawing it. <laughs> then you play against Rogue. You draw it in the starting and you're like, oh, um, go away. Baby yes. Rage, never lucky. <laughs> then you draw it the first thing. That's so sad. I like I this though. feel bad for Kaldi. I think coining the Wild Growth is right. And then just innervating the Lothab into Kazan, that way you curve out well. Yeah, I like it a lot as well. Yeah. With that hand, it, it, seems, it makes a lot of sense. But it's just that Kazan is like... Uh, oh, oh, you're just wishing. If you call it, you're just wishing that it was a pilot that's shredder. Exactly. Because the, the minion you get from it is so, so powerful. I I really like type hands as well. Uh, it's not yeah. good against the Lotha, but it's gonna do a lot of work against Kazan. He has early drops. Should be able to contest stuff. So. Yeah, that's. I think that's fine. I mean, he has a three drop to play here. It's it's not great, but it's something to do. The, the Lotha effect wasn't like that powerful in the end. Exactly. Like it, it was a five-five. Yep. Uh, so you can Kazan here, and the next yep. turn you can Wild Growth. Yep. Absolutely. Um, That's. I. I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah. You don't trade because you're not afraid of anything, and you just go face. Yep. yep. That Kazan. I don't. I don't like trading. Uh, you get either. punished by uh, backstab bad. SI way too yeah. hard. Among other things, there's a lot of things. I mean, like it was deadly poison assai. Yeah. Any assai, almost any assai, like a deadly poison assai would be amazing. But it, it's actually not all that bad in this situation. The cyber game doesn't have those particular cards. Exactly. I think you shredder, but that's just me. Yep. I think Samson shredder. Uh, do you uh, 
Well, I'm, I'm just going to see her backstabbing the Gazan and just killing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you, you shred her backstab thing. Yeah. Um, there could be like some arguments made in favor of keeping the backstab because of Edwin in the hand. Because, but uh, I, I would lean towards playing it here. Mm -hmm. Just take that out. And like, if he plays a Drew the Claw next turn, he can just like, I don't know, sap, play Van Cleef. It's, you know, get some tempo yeah. back. Not too bad. You know. I agree. There we go. Oh man, this is gonna be a rough game. See, and this is like the decision, right? Mm -hmm. This is where it's like, well, I could play the Shredder, but if I don't like draw into something next turn, I lose. That's a tough call. I feel like if you if you choose to go with the Shredder, you're gambling on the next draw. Like the next draw has to be something playable. Because the Shredder is more powerful play if you pick up that play for next turn. But right now he has absolutely nothing. And if the draw is, let's say it's a Ragnaros, I yeah, like, he might well, have potentially just like lose the game right there. I still like the Shredder because think about how many high drops he, he has. He has Ragnaros and Boom, so there's a two out of however many cards left he has mm -hmm. in his deck. So yeah. it's like two out of 20. I agree. So like a 10% chance that he like draws completely dead. I agree. Uh, I like it as well. And I think it's mostly because of how far he would fall behind on the board. Yeah. I think it's really hard to come back as a Druid if you just wild growth there. Yeah, I agree 100%. But it looks like Heights, Sap, Van Cleef, that's a pretty strong board. He did draw into something as well. Yep. Um, not that it mattered because it got the... Saps. Yeah, why not Wild Growth? Sure. Just getting the hero bar would have been somewhat useless. Might be uh, useful on the following damage. <laughs> that one damage actually matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is <laughs> fine as well. I, I think Hyped is in a very good position right now. Yep, definitely. Just Unless there's a like, mail house, but that's not it. So you trade in the 3 2, so you're not like vulnerable to swipe, I think. Yeah, I, th I think so then. Play around MC Tech. Yeah. Like a champ. Next time is looking kind of nice. Drake for next turn is, is decent. Uh, lore? Or Shred or Shade? Shred oh. or Shade would be more power on the board. But, uh. I like. I like lore because it contests more of the board. I, I think so too. And it also, like, I feel like he you needs to. draw to a swipe or, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like swipe is the card that he needs. And if he just goes with the shred or shade, it's like the, the cards that he, he has to get to draw, he can't get. So, is he gonna double SI? Looks like it. It's interesting. I would have gone for Drake. He has to trade. He has to trade now. He would be dead to combo otherwise. Yeah, I would go for Drake. That's interesting. Huh. And trade uh, Van Cleef with the 1-1? One -one? You can go Drake... Uh... Oh no, never mind. He doesn't have 7 mana, does he? Never mind. Yeah, I, I would have done that play then that he did. I'm sorry. Like, the Skype calls blocking the mana crystals. Yeah, uh... it's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was quite good. Yeah, I, th I think it was fine. And uh, here, that's a lot of power. It knows that the saps are like a... Oh, well, one sap is used, so... The remaining card is most you, likely not yeah. going to be a sap. You can't really play around sap, you're just kind of like, you know, no, no. against the wall right now. Just get the most power on the board that you can. Oh, wow. But, uh, uh, I kind of think he still flurries. I still think you flurry. Yeah. Attack in with the um, teacher. Flurry. I'm trying, I'm trying to like count it up if he's... Dead to combo if he doesn't flurry, or if he's dead to combo anyway with the clearing the board. Oh, I can. Okay, that makes sense. I can adjust the camera so you're not half the screen. Sweet. You can see stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there's the flurry. Yep. Do you trade into the first half of Shredder? I think you do. Yeah, with the 1 1. It's yep. too good to pass up. Just, uh,. Makes it less likely you die to combo. There's no reason to trade, but I guess why not? It's fun. Yeah. You, know, you might as well protect. Oh! Your trade. That, well, that's, that's that. Very, very good draw. <laughs> I think so too. I, I think Caldi has a very good shot of winning this game. That was the that was the card oh he God. needed. Board clear. Easy Life game. Was very far ahead. Like there's ten power on the board, and Caldi had no way to clear it. But now suddenly, with that one swipe top deck. Can even get yeah, the shade out. Oh my gosh, that's even an inner weight. Wow. 
Uh, so. Yeah, hype needs to find yeah, sprint. Sprint. Yep. Just like that one that card. Crazy. Around. Just an oil in his hype and hype sand now. Oh man. Oh, oh man. That does not help. I think you just oil up. I think so, though. It's such an expensive card. Yep. So uh, if you uh, get lucky and pick up the sprint, you have then, it. Yeah. You can maybe get a flurry or something yeah. for your board. It'd be nice. Yeah. You can, like, sprint into a flurry. And you Man, have the... this match was looking so good for hyped, also. <laughs> good for hyped? Yeah, for hyped. He was, like, really far ahead on board. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, was. yeah. Like, it's not looking so good right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. Playing the wild crow earlier, like when he didn't hero bar for that one dab, it was so good. Because the turn nine with the shredder belt, so it was very powerful. Yeah. It was, it was kind of kind of tricky for hype to deal with, especially with the hand that he had, because he's like that. He didn't pick up the oil for the flurry, but it was too late. He had already spent mana that turn. I don't. I don't know. I like oiling, but no. yeah, I would not like to see it. Too. But I don't think it would have won even. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man. Let's go face the shade. Yep. Here we go. Good play. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean. You have to flurry now. Just play around Savage Roar. Um, is there any way he lives? The boombot's hit for one. Yeah, we'll just see the outcome. Nope. If he, um, Not if like... he oiled last turn. Um, no, it really didn't matter. I no, guess. he, he would have missed one damage if he oiled last turn. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, he could have. Yeah. So actually, this worked out fine. Okay. So he missed that. He's looking for the. Um... Oh, seven uh, damage. Yeah, that's. Uh... Is that um... lethal? That's lethal. Yes. Damn. That is exactly lethal. Mm -hmm. Through the floor is 4, Savage Roar is 5 with the hero bar. He's not gonna miss it. No I, way. Hope, I, hope, I hope not. <laughs> Come on, Kaldi, you got this. Don't be um, it's not nice. Yeah, that, this is good. Oh, this such fast. an important This match. feels like BM now. He took such a long time. Come on, there you go, buddy. Okay. Alright, so Kaldi's gonna take the series 3 2 against Hypes. Really important match for Kaldi. Absolutely. Should like al almost well. Well, the horde uh, group does have one more match, so he has like two two more matches to go still. So I wouldn't call it. It's like safe yet, but um, yeah, at five and three, definitely looking strong. And his chance to move on to the playoffs or at least to stay in the league are pretty good right now. Hype so. still not too bad at five and three, still on top of the standings, but uh, was unable to run away with it. Yeah, he would have. Uh, he would have for sure made the qualifiers. Now there's even a chance he might not make it if he loses next week. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so if he loses all of them. Remaining yeah, game. he needs to prep uh, really, really hard for this next match. Uh, but that was a good series. Yeah, it was. It was really entertaining. I actually, I like watching it a lot. It was pretty fun to see. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, I like. I, I think a lot of our predictions went correct as well. Yeah, I'm just. Happy he brought Max Shaman. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, yeah. he would have lost. <laughs> yep, it's, it seemed quite good. Although it, it's sad, like its weakness. It's a card game, and uh, <laughs> the rogue draws is put it there. Yeah, exactly. Max Shaman feels like it can beat almost anything. Do you know what's like the worst matchup for the Max Shaman? Like, what does it lose to? Um, I think it loses to Rogue, and I think it also loses to Freeze Mage. Um. Freeze Mage probably, yeah. I, th I think so, though. As long as it because doesn't let Ragnaros. Yeah. It's pretty bad at recovering once the board is cleared, because there's like no cards drawing. It doesn't run Earthshock, so Doomsayers just roll over it. So mm -hmm. I would say Freeze Mage is pretty good against it. And Rogue is, you know, it can win as long as they don't get like, you know, Lotheb and Ra like uh, Boom yeah. and all this other jazz. So, yeah. yeah I, I agree with that. I, I think the I think the biggest weakness is... Uh, it's the, it's the decks that can clear the board efficiently. Because Mech Summon, like I, like I said, can't, you can't really like recover from that. So if there's like an early, let's say, Deadly Poison Blade Flurry, or there's an early Doomsayer Frost Nova, it's, it can be quite hard for the, for the Shaman to make a new board 
it's just like completely reliant exactly. on the goblins. And if, if you threw like uh, some spells early, and this rock pirate, this crackle, you can't really like play those. Yeah, you can't develop taunts, a board yeah. and like freeze mage just laughing at you. Uh, you. You make a taunt totem against freeze mage. Okay, yeah, pretty good. But yeah, I think uh, our next match is going to be life coach versus a maz. That's going to be a good match. Oh uh, yeah. So make sure to tweet at us. See who's gonna win. So that is hashtag King Win League. Make sure you mm -hmm. include that. Uh, I think we're gonna go take a break right now for 10 minutes, but we'll be right back. So, later. <laughs> 